Vivek Ramaswamy generated some controversy when he said that people ages 18 to 25 years old should have to pass a civics test if they want to vote. I don't know if that's the appropriate way to deal with the, the issue of ignorant voters, because I don't know that age is a determining factor in whether or not you're going to be a good voter or a bad voter. Maybe people just need to pass some kind of high school civics exam to vote. But still, there's no guarantee that an individual will be smart or capable enough to vote, no matter how old they are, no matter how much money they make. It's a tough question. The question that we're trying to answer is how do we make sure that those who are voting actually care about what they're voting for and aren't just voting because of social pressures or tribal celebrity reasons or otherwise? Which brings me to this story. Gen Z for change. You saw the title of this video. My friends, a Gen Z Democrat was owned so bad on social media that his heart started racing and he was he, he admitted himself to the emergency room. And so this brings me back to the point about Vivek Ramaswamy. Yo, if Gen Z wants change, but they are so frail that when they engage in conversation, they have to rush themselves to the emergency room. Gen Z, y'all are not confidence building. To be fair, I, I really detest this Gen Z for change thing. You don't speak for all of Generation Z, dude. You speak for progressive activists. That's it. But that's the game they're trying to play. They say we are Gen Z. Gen Z is us because the perception they want to create is that if you are someone who is 26 years or younger, you must be progressive. Otherwise, you're a weirdo. Despite the fact that Gen Z, for the most part, is in the minority progressive. That's right. And it's their own data showing this. But let me show you the story and I'll break down for you what happened. I'd like to introduce you to Jeremy. Jeremy, buddy. Bro, if you if you are putting yourself in the ER over this, I hope you're doing all right, man. I don't know what the issue is. I, I, I He says he has some kind of heart issue on this. If you cannot handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. You should not be doing this work. It is a miserable business. You get attacked. You get death threats. I was swatted 15 times last year. It is not something I'd recommend to the faint of heart. If this is where you are finding yourself, bow out. It ain't for you. I hope you're doing okay, buddy, and I hope you're looking into the data. But the story is as such. This young man, who is a content creator for Gen Z for Change, here we have them on, on TikTok, Gen Z for Change, made the outrageous claim in a Twitter space that 30% of black people were shot every year or something to that effect. Let me play for you the clip where Nuance Bro, we've had on the show a commentator, I guess you consider him fairly moderate. He doesn't really take sides. He just kind of calls people out if they're, you know, if he perceives them to be hypocritical or uh, he generally just, he, he's his own guy. He's his own guy. But he gets a he, he, nuance, bro, typically gets a lot of respect from people in the more disaffected liberal libertarian space. And in this video of a, a Twitter space, he owns this kid so hard, the kid has to go to the hospital. Let me show you the clip first. I'll play it for you, and then I'll show you the sequence of events, which ultimately lead Gen Z for change, progressive Democrat, Gen Zer, to going to the ICU. Let me play this clip. Here we go. No, 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 no. You're telling me 13.2 million black people are getting shot and killed unarmed every year. There is context to that. There's definitely context to those numbers. Dude, you're fucking crazy, dude. That's like a fucking Holocaust. And the, dude, every black person would be dead in like fucking three years. Like, what are you talking about? That's crazy. What are you saying? Yet we're still dying dude, in record you know what the numbers actual answer is? than white. Jeremy, do you know what the actual answer is? Because I actually have the real numbers. I Like, you've clearly never done. This is, I'm, I'm fucking mind blown right now, dude. The real number <laughs> By Washington Post, keep tracks of this. Unarmed black people shot by police, men and women. It's usually like 10 people, dude. It's like 10, maybe, maybe like 20 in a year. Sometimes it's like eight, you know? It's, it's fluctuating. It's like seven to like, like 22, maybe. Like, that's what it is. Not million. Like, that's just total. Do you believe that? 
Uh, I'm going to have to do more research. If you send me the link, I'll look. You were claiming like fucking, what was the number, Jonathan? 13.2 million. You said 30% of the entire black population. That is crazy. Roughly, like, yeah. I, like, and I actually dude, believe that. that. is insane. Like 20 to like 30%. If, dude, legit, if Harry and Chris were in here even right now, they would be like, dude, what the fuck? We got to tell at least to fire this guy. This guy's fucking nuts. Like, he's out of his fucking mind. He's smoking more crack than fucking uh, Hunter Biden. Like, this is insane. Dude, that's two Chicago's worth of black people. Yeah. I can't time. believe what I'm hearing. Like, do you, they don't have enough bullets to fucking do that, probably. Okay. Is, like, 20, is 15 to 20% fair, then? No! Because <laughs> no! then it's like... Six do you know six... numbers? Like, what did you get in, in math class? What grades did you get, dude? Like, I can't believe... Have you never talked to anybody, like, about this issue? Like, with numbers ever? I am... Like, guys, people in the audience, can I get some reactions in here? Like, what are you guys thinking about this? Like, are you guys as shocked as I am? Like, this is insane. This is crazy. You don't even have to know about the, the crime issue at all to know what these claims are, are insane. He, he said, after two minutes of this, is 15 to 20% fair. Making the argument that 15 to 20 percent of the black population is shot and killed every year, which is the most insane thing. And this person makes content for Gen Z for change, claiming all this progressive stuff about young people. Dude, that is not Gen Z. I got to tell you, I know for a fact a lot of Gen Z people had them on the show. They do not believe psychotic nonsense like this. Now, if you're a Gen Z person, you want to associate with these people and get mocked so ridiculously, you end up in the ER. So be it. Man, Nuance Pro tweets, I understand the optics of owning someone so hard in debate that it sends them to the ER and a psych ward and gets them to delete their account as an element of humor in it. But I truly hope the young man is doing well and recovers swiftly. Please do not be cruel by piling on. I'm showing you this first because, dude, look. We don't want these fragile people in politics, voting and all that stuff. We get it. But uh, this one individual, I want him to be OK. All right. And, you know, I thought about this. If simply being owned in a debate, put him in the ER. I'm kind of concerned about doing a video about him, but it needs to be said. Gen Z for Change is a political activist organization. And some of their some of the people associated with them have been getting prominent social media play. So we need to call out the manipulations. And I'll tell you why this is important, why I care. Gen Z for Change is attempting to create the perception that Gen Z supports progressive Democrat and far left policies. That way, if someone is in Gen Z and they want to fit in and be popular, they say, oh, that's the mainstream. I want to be on the right side of history. We got to call out those lies and that manipulation and highlight just how I'll be nice ignorant and wrong these people are. Take a look at this. So he says, my heart is racing. This has not been a good night. Then going to the ER, then keeping it calm, cool, collected, just got admitted, might be here two days. So glad I'm done with school. It would have been hell trying to catch up. Dude went to the emergency room. Dude, if you are wrong and you are, do not engage in these debates. But see, this is the thing. Democrats need Gen Z to vote for them. They need to make sure they get the most vapid and ignorant voters possible. Otherwise, no one's going to support psychotic policies that destroy everything and make your future worse. Here's what I want, Gen Z. I want all y'all to be able to buy houses for a good price. I want you to make a ton of money doing your job. I want you to be able to work at McDonald's and make 20, 30 bucks an hour. I genuinely mean it. I want the economy to be so good that you can be the lowest of skilled labor, generalist labor. And I mean that with all due respect. I'm not saying it to be derisive. I'm saying you walk up to a company, you say, I've never done the mailroom before. And they say, we're going to hire you. Say, OK, well, I need to make $50,000 a year to pay my bills. And they're saying, we got you one better. We got you 75. I want the economy so good that they're paying premium for you. Then you go buy a house. 
You get a white picket fence, a family, you get a dog. We get that American dream just for you. That's what I want. But you're not going to get it with people who are voting for policies that are destroying your future. And don't look at me. I'm not saying the Republican Party is doing you any favors either. I'm saying these people in the establishment are trying to trick you. And they take this dude, make, he makes videos. He clearly has not even read one bit of data on this. And do you want to be aligned with that? I am simply telling you to be independent and vote for the policies you've researched that will make your future better and make the future for other people better, too. I do not like these stories of unarmed black men being shot. I want it to stop. But let's be real. I jump over. Well, we got one more. Oh, so I want to show you this. Uh, Jeremy saying he didn't go to a psych ward. He's in the ICU for being piled on. Jeez. I jumped over to uh, my good friend perplexity.ai. It's an AI chat bot that in some ways is better than chat GPT, but in some ways kind of worse. But anyway, I asked it, how many unarmed black men get shot by police each year? And it said in 2019, police fatally shot 13 unarmed black men, according to the Washington Post database. They say there were 1,048 fatal shootings in total, yada, yada, yada. So I pulled the source. Thank you, perplexity.ai. And uh, sure enough, it does say they're fact checking Charlie Kirk. He said eight. The real number was 13. 13 unarmed black men were fatally shot in 2019. All right, here's another question. How many police interactions happen every year? In 2020, 53.8 million residents age 16 or older had one or more contacts with police. That is to say, out of 53.8 million interactions, 13 unarmed black men died the year prior. So let's just say, let's just, let's just be generous and say the previous year was even 40 million or 30 million. Let's say it was half for some reason. Probably not. It's probably comparable at 53, maybe 52. 13 is an astronomically low number. Now, one is too many. 13 is certainly too many. However, we have to understand that bad things happen. And of these 13 unarmed black men, we didn't say innocent. We don't know. We don't. They're innocent until until uh, found guilty in a court of law. So I will say innocent. But I just want to point out the possibility that some of these men may have been swinging, swinging fists or, or beating a cop or something like that or threatening the life of another person. We don't know for sure, but we don't want anyone to die. Not a single person. But the number is certainly substantially less. I asked Perplexity AI how many white men are killed. It's a white men specifically. It said that in 2022, 502 white people were killed by police in the United States compared to 42 black people. Now, that is wrong. I corrected it. I said, you are incorrect. That source says 313 black people were killed by police in 2022. And it did provide a correction. And I have the stats right here. Statistics showing that in 2022, 313 black people were killed by police, 502 white people were killed by police, 216 Hispanic people. So it is disproportionate. I don't know why. Some people argue that it's because we see disproportionate crime among young, uh, young black men, that they make up, I think, around half of violent crime typically in these cities. I don't know that's true. Maybe, maybe not. There could be a tie to this based on culture and poverty. I think culture and poverty play the biggest role in why any group commits crimes. Having come from an area where I saw a lot of white trash, hillbilly type in individuals getting into trouble all the time and getting arrested all the time. I think poverty is the biggest factor in wh why uh, someone is going to be driven to crime or something like that. Culture, of course, playing a role. Now, for whatever reason, I think you can look back on history. You can see cultural challenges that result in these numbers, but the numbers exist. So is the reason we see more Black people killed by police due to the fact that there are more uh, a disproportionate amount of crimes being committed. It's possible. I'm not here to tell you all the data because I'm not a data scientist. I'm just saying an argument presented may be the case, maybe not. The left argues the inverse outright, saying it's only because police are racist. But I don't think that is true, because in some of these circumstances, especially with that uh, recent killing, I think it was in uh, um, was it Memphis, the cops who beat the guy to death, they were black. The left then argues, but they're black and they're upholding white supremacy, which is just they're desperately trying to justify their positions, which are not they're, they're nonsensical. I think one of the challenges that we face 
as any reasonable human being in this country that does not like racism, is that people choose to self-segregate based on race. It's a fact. And we, we, we don't like it. Now, a lot of the segregation did originate in policy, and it was rooted in people wanting to self-segregate. You ended up with white neighborhoods, black neighborhoods. You still have them today. Even after we've banned segregation, redlining, blockbusting, etc., although some of it does still happen, you still will have an Asian wanting to live in an Asian neighborhood, a white person wanting to live in a white neighborhood, Hispanics trying to live in Hispanic neighborhoods. Doesn't it make sense? Look, if I move to Japan, am I going to want to move to the heart of hardcore Japanese culture when I don't speak Japanese? Or am I going to be attracted to places where people speak a little bit of English? This is reality. We see it in every single country. Someone, you know, look, I'm in Turkey. I'm visiting a tourist location. I hear two people speaking North American English and I'm like, hey, Americans and they're Canadians. I'm like, yeah, close enough. How's it going? What are you doing? I can talk. We can share ideas. How do you, how do you like it? I walk up to someone who's speaking Turkish. I'm like, I don't even know what they're saying. That's what happens. People want to be near people they share things with. If you grew up eating a certain kind of food, you want to live by the market that has the ingredients for the food that you like. And this creates racial segregation. And I think it does suck. I think it's a problem. I think the future of this country is going to be more mixed in terms of different people living in different neighborhoods. We're all going to get along. And I, and I think we're working towards that future. But I think it's the left. And I think it's these progressives that are pushing us in a very, very dark direction by pushing for segregation and exacerbating the lies. How is it this young man believes that 13 million black people are being killed every year? That's insane. As Nuance Pro po points out, that would wipe out the black population in a matter of years. He says three years. He's technically correct. But basically what happened is it'd be a diminishing return. So if, if you have, let's say, let's say, um, what do, what do we have? We have 327 million. We're talking about 30 million black people. 13 point million in the first year, dropping you down to about 17. Then a third of that is going to bring you down to about six. So you're going to be now at about 11 million. Then a third of that is about three and a half, four. So now you're, so it's not quite three years because it's, if it's only 30% each year, you're eventually, he says it's, it's basically a Holocaust. Bro, it's two Holocausts every year if those numbers were correct. They're not. And ultimately, it comes down to this. Gen Z for change. I don't work for any political action groups. I hate the Republican Party. I hate the Democratic Party. Hate's a pretty strong word, but I, I don't like either of them. A small handful of politicians I do like. In 2020, I was a big fan of Yang and Tulsi Gabbard, but now that they're basically out, I don't know who's left. Ro Khanna seems to be okay, you know. But then on the Republican side, there's a small handful of libertarian individuals, which I think are being honest. I like Thomas Massey. I don't agree with them on everything. Gen Z for change. Oh, they have a bunch of facts. 63% the percentage of Gen Z's voters who supported progressive House candidates. Now, I want you to understand this. Imagine you watch this guy Jeremy's videos. They say 40 percent. The percentage of Gen Z voters whose primary news source is TikTok or Instagram. Imagine that you're watching his videos and he's wrong about all of it. And then you believe it. And then it's you that one day is standing before a group of people and you say something so stupid, everyone starts pointing and laughing at you. Your heart races, you nearly faint, and you ask to be rushed to the hospital. Do you want to be that? If you do, fine. I'm not telling you to not push back and say, hey, you're wrong about these things if you think you're right. I'm just saying, please be right. And don't follow these people who are wrong. Because wow, are they wrong. And here's the dude doing his videos. Stop with the climate doomism. We know it's scary, but we as Gen Z will make the difference needed. And therein lies the big problem. Instagram and TikTok. Well, TikTok banned us at TimCast. TimCast IRL was banned. Why? Don't know. We had a politician on it said TikTok won't allow them to use the platform. Only Democrats. TikTok only allows certain views. They are manipulating you. Now, some of you probably concerned about looking stupid. Some of you probably don't care because you're going to say, as long as I fit in, what do I care if it's right or wrong? Do you? I don't care. I'll do me. I'm just telling you this. That dude was humiliated and not by conservatives. Nuance Bro is not some conservative guy. So imagine inside your bubble, you fit in. That bubble's very small. 
They're trying to convince you it's bigger, but it's not. You're going to walk out in New York City and you're going to say something stupid. In fact, Nuance Bro points it out. What did he say? Harry and Chris? He said, if they heard this, they'd be like, get this dude out of here. Fire him. He's nuts. Yeah. Even among your peer group, they're going to be like, dude, you're insane. How could you be so wrong? How could you embarrass us like that? Stand true to your beliefs, but make sure they're predicated on fact and you're not saying insane psychobabble nonsense, lest you rush to the hospital in all of your frailty. But the last thing I'll add on this one is, dude, if, if, if that's really where we're at, young people needing to go to the emergency room because they were wrong one time online, Gen Z, y'all are in trouble. So how about you prove this guy wrong? How about, I, I think Gen Z for change should get rid of this dude. Look, bro, I hope you're doing all right, but you should not be working this job. They need to fire you and drop your content. But you know what? I'll take it. Keep that dude on. Keep him on. And then we'll ask Gen Z, is that what you want to be? Do you want to be a strong leader? Or do you want to be so frail, scared, and pathetic, you go to the hospital emergency room because words crazy. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.